OK, let's do some math for fun. Here we are going to integrate from 0 to 1 ln of x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. And if you haven't already, please pause the video and give this a try first. OK, so how did you guys do it? Maybe with some complex analysis? I don't know. Hmm. But this is how I you know, solve this integral here. First of all, I don't think u substitution will work out for me. I don't think integration by parts will work out for me. All right? And of course, uh, partial fraction is not the way to go because we don't have rational. It's not polynomial over polynomial situation. But I do notice that I have x squared plus 1. right? And we know that tangent squared plus 1 is nicely equal to secant squared. And let's just give that a try first and hope for the best, right? So what I'm going to do is I will take x, right? I'll let x equal to tangent theta. And we will bring this integral from the x world to the theta world. So first of all, let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. We see dx will be the derivative of that is secant squared theta, d theta. And now remember that when we have this integral, this means we have x equals to 0 up to x equals to 1. And when we bring this integral into the theta world, we have to remember to figure out the corresponding theta values for the limits of the integration. And to do so, well, you know, when x is equal to 0, be sure to plug into here. So we're talking about 0 is equal to tangent theta. And you have to ask yourself, tangent of what angle will give you 0? A nice answer for that is theta is equal to 0, right? And on the other hand, well, let me just put this down right here. Theta is equal to 0, but if x is equal to 1, plug into here, then we see that 1 is equal to tangent theta, and this will tell me that, well, tangent of pi over 4 will be 1. So theta is equal to pi over 4. So let me just put that down right here. And let's go ahead and just work everything out in the theta world because at the end of the day, we just care about the value because this is a definite integral, right? So that's nice. And let me make the integral sign better like that. OK. Yeah, let, let me do it again. I just OK. Anyway, here we have ln. And then this x is tangent theta. So don't forget to change that as well. And then after that, we have the plus 1, close parentheses, over here. We have x squared plus 1, right? So be sure you have the tangent square theta now, like this, and then plus 1. And then the dx is secant square theta d theta. And you actually see that this integral has a lot of ingredients that we can talk about. And of course, first of all, this is the trick sub, right? And next, you see that tangent squared theta plus 1, this is nicely equal to secant squared theta. And this and that cancel out very, very nicely, isn't it? Now, we can see that this is just equal to the integral theta from 0 to theta 1, OK? And we have ln. And once again, this and that cancel already. We don't have any more denominator whatsoever. And we have tangent theta plus 1 d theta, right? But if you look at that integral, that's just as intimidating as the original. And as usual, why don't we try to write tangent theta as sine theta over cosine theta? And once again, hope for the best. So this is going to be tangent theta. It's the same as sine theta over cosine theta and then plus 1 and then we have this d theta here okay well actually this is not 1 this is pi over 4 sorry okay all right now we see that we have two things inside of this parentheses of course we can just get a common denominator and then add them up so this is the integral from 0 to pi over 4 haha i got this right this time and then we have ln parentheses and to get the common denominator, of course, right here, we can just multiply the time and bottom by cosine theta, tau sine theta, and we can, of course, combine the fraction. So on the top, it's sine theta plus cosine theta, and then over the same denominator, which is just the cosine theta. So this is just a typical you know, 
computational steps, right? And what can we do next? Okay, well, we see that uh, this is a quotient inside of uh, Ln, so we can break it down into 2 Ln, and it's a difference of 2 Ln, right? So I can write this down as the integral from 0 to pi over 4. And let me just put this down, Ln of sine theta plus cosine theta, close that, and then subtract another Ln, just cosine theta now, like this, d theta. And some people will say that's cool, a big parenthesis, but you know, it doesn't really matter. We have this integral, and we use the d theta to close this, all right? Okay, so now what? Huh. I still cannot really find a nice antiderivative for this, right? So hopefully, there's some nice way that we can do to cancel things out, and at the very end, we can actually see a nice value for this, right, after all the work. Well, well, sine theta plus cosine theta, we can actually combine them into just a cosine function. And in fact, we have done that recently, right? And if you haven't already, you can also check out Wuhan's uh, work on an integral that had involves sine theta plus cosine theta. But I will do a quick recap right here. In fact, we can write this as a times cosine of theta plus another angle, alpha. And this works when you have these two input being the same. And to figure out a, this is how we do it. a is the same as the following. We know that a squared is equal to the coefficient of sine theta, which is 1. So you do that square, so it's 1 squared, plus coefficient of cosine theta is 1, and you also do that square. And we know a squared is equal to 2. And you can take uh, uh, a value. So I'll just say we can take a being equal to square root of 2. And notice that I'm using the positive version right here. Uh, it's OK to use negative, but in that case, you have to select a correct alpha value. But anyway, for this alpha value, to get that, we have to get tangent of alpha. This is equal to negative. The coefficient right here divided by the coefficient right there, which is just 1 over 1. right? And if you want to see how we derive this, you can check your multi video as well. But anyway, this is just Alpha is equal to what? Well, in this case, once again, we can take, this is just take that, alpha is equal to negative pi over 4. So in fact, both of them will work, make this work, all right? So I'm going to replace sine theta plus cosine theta with square root of 2 times cosine of theta minus pi over 4, all right? So now we will see this is going to be right here. This is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 4. And we have ln. And once again, the inside here becomes a is the square root of 2. Okay? And then we have cosine. And let me just put this down in black. And then we have theta. And we have alpha, which is negative pi over 4. So with minus pi over 4, like this. Close that for the cosine, close that for the ln. And don't forget, we still have to minus the ln of cosine, right? Cosine theta, like this, d theta. OK, so now, OK, I do notice that this is square root of 2 times cosine of this instead of the ln. So this is a product instead of the ln. And we can break them apart, right? And when I do that, we will see, we will just work with ln of cosine of theta minus pi over 4. And maybe that's a good idea. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 4. ln of the first thing, which is square root of 2. Close that, and then we add. OK, yes, I'm using a blue pad, but you know. We add ln of this. And yeah, let me just put down ln of cosine of theta minus pi over 4, and then minus ln of cosine theta d theta. And now, it's kind of crazy because we have three parts now, right? This is actually pretty easy. In fact, it's easy because this is just a number, ln of square root of 2. So we can totally integrate this guy, no problem on that. Now, how can we deal with this and that, though? And 
Maybe you want to try because now we have a difference of two ln. You can write it as ln of this over that. You can try that. But the interesting thing is that remember when we have an integral of three parts like this, it's pretty much you just integrate this, integrate that, integrate that, right? And I cannot suspect this and that. It's kind of weird. Hopefully, there's some kind of nice cancellation or there's some kind of nice combination of this and that. And the reason that I notice is because input here is theta minus pi over 4, and the limit of the integration is from 0 to pi over 4, right? So that's a good hit. And to actually convince us that there's any kind of connection between this and this, I will just investigate this integral from 0 to pi over 4 in detail right here. And when I say in detail, it means in blue, right? So note, right, that's this. You know, write this down, note. Let's go ahead and, and do it from 0 to pi over 4, ln of cosine of theta minus pi over 4. And then I'm trying to show you guys how I would do this if this is the very, very first time that I'm you know, trying to solve this. Anyway, let's go ahead and do some use up in this case, all right? Because usually when you have theta minus pi over 4, this is just some kind of shiftment, right? of the regular cosine function instead of the one But anyway, let's say u, let me just put it down, u equal theta minus pi over 4, right? And this is nice because if I differentiate both sides, du is equal to d theta, so that's good. And if you take this integral from the theta world to the u world, uh -huh, you see, this is the u substitution part. As I told you, it has a lot of ingredients. But anyway, let's see, u will go from what? If you plug in 0 into theta, u will be negative pi over 4. And then up here, when you plug in pi over 4 into this theta, theta is pi over 4 minus pi over 4, u will be 0. And then inside here, we have ln of cosine, and this input now is just u. And then d theta is the same as du, so we can just replace that with du, all right? And Remember, when we have an integral, especially when we have a definite integral, that means we have numbers right here, the variables that we're using doesn't matter because at the very end, this is just going to be a number, right? Okay, so now let's compare this and that. Especially let's compare the value of this integral and this integral, all right? Well, we do notice that the input is the same right here, right? The integrand, I mean. But unfortunately, this integral here, it's going to be going from 0 to positive pi over 4. And in this case, we have a negative pi over 4, right? So I cannot really do too much. In fact, you could, but uh, as I said, this is not really, really obvious. You have to use the fact that cosine is an even function and then just kind of turn this around again, all right? Here is a better way to do it. First of all, I will just use that fact right here first to turn things around. And you already see uh, the integration. It's going to work out very, 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 very nicely, all right? So now, I'm going to erase this right here, all right? And I will tell you, OK, here we have theta minus pi over 4. But once again, cosine is an even function. So that means this has to be the same, well, actually, let's just say has. This is actually the same as the integral from, say, th from theta equals to 0 to theta equals to pi over 4, ln of cosine. And this is the input for cosine. Because cosine is even, I can say the negative of this input, namely negative of theta minus pi over 4, like this, right? Once again, because cosine is even. So I'll just say cosine is an even function, OK? So the negative input is the same as the positive input. And now, of course, you can just do this the usual way. And I'm just going to turn this around for you guys. When you distribute, you will get positive pi over 4 minus theta. So it's pretty much you just flip that, right? So that's nice. And I'll just put down pi over 4 minus theta. And now, let's do the u sub again right here with this input. You'll see this much nicer. Let u equal that, which is pi over 4 minus 
theta, and you'll see that right away. du is equal to negative d theta, and of course you can multiply by negative 1 on both sides. d theta will be negative du. And now, this is equal to integral when theta is equal to 0, plug it into here now, and you see u will be positive pi over 4. Then that's much nicer compared with this integral that we have to also focus on later on, right? So we have u goes from positive pi over 4, and then when, u, when, when theta is pi over 4, plug into here, pi over 4 minus pi over 4, u will be 0. And this is ln of cosine of, this is my u now, and then d theta is negative du, so we multiply by negative du. Huh. Now what? Well, we can bring the negative to the front if you would like, so let's do that. And when you do that, you see that originally this number was bigger than the top, right? Pi over 4 to 0. But we can now switch it legitimately because of this negative, right? This is one of the uh, integration properties. So this is equal to positive integral now, and I will just switch this around. So I will have u goes from 0 to u goes to pi over 4. And the input is the same. ln of cosine of u du, all right? And yes, in fact, I don't know what this value is. However, if you pay attention to this part right here, remember we have to integrate this guy from 0 to pi over 4 as well, right? So that's this part. And if you look at the middle part from 0 to pi over 4, d theta, well, once again, it doesn't really matter if you're using theta or u. But what I just showed you is that this middle integral is exactly the same as the same value as the third integral. So what does that mean? That means we can cancel these two out. Because once again, the middle integral has the same value as the third integral. When you add and subtract, they just become 0. So now, this part is all gone, which is excellent. And we just have to finish this. And of course, let's just attach a d theta to make this legitimate. And I will finish this as well for you guys. And I just have to have more space. OK. In the end, right here, this is just going to be, I will have to integrate ln of square root of 2 with respect to theta. In another word, this is ln of square root of 2 times theta, and then we have to go from, this is theta going from 0 to theta going from pi over 4, right? So 0 to pi over 4. And you see, when I plug in pi over 4, we just have ln of square root of 2 times pi over 4, and then minus plugging 0 into here. Let me just show you guys all the work, which is you know, 0 anyway, but this part is gone. So finally, this is pretty much the answer. And if you guys want to be fancy a little bit, when you have the square root, this is the 1 half power. And let me just write this down. This is pi over 4 times ln of 2 to the 1 half power. And now we can bring this power to the front. Do not minus 1, because this is just the law of property. This is not the power rule for derivative. But anyway, pi over 4 times 1 half, you get pi over 8. And then you have the ln of 2, like this. So in the end, this right here is the answer for this definite integral. And we are all done. Hopefully, you guys like this. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe, and especially for this whole new year. And this is the first integral video that I have for you guys. Yay. Anyway, that's it.